Let's talk about techniques, specifically sauces, specifically even more sauce bechamel. It sounds like a fancy French sauce, but it's the easiest and most versatile sauce to make at home. It's just a milk-based thickened sauce. It's delicious, versatile, and easy. We're going to make it in this pot, in this vessel, this multifunction pot, which I love. Um, it's both a skillet, cast iron enamel, and it's a pot. Don and I just bought a, a tiny, tiny place in New York City with a tiny, tiny kitchen, and this is what I'm going to be having in it because it's so, uh, it's so functional and utilitarian. I love it. So that's what we're going to be making our bechamel sauce today in. Uh, and we're going to use that sauce on my favorite sandwich, which is a croque madame, a bistro staple. It sounds fancy again, but it's nothing more than ham and cheese with some sauce on it. And then we're going to top it with a fried egg. So let's get working on the bechamel sauce. First, we're going to melt some butter, and then we're going to put some shallots in. Shallots are a great onion to work with, lots of flavor. We're just going to sweat those shallots a little bit, add a little salt. It's an incredibly versatile sauce. That's what I love about it, the bechamel. It's, a great, it's fabulous for uh, mac and cheese. Uh, make a bechamel and add, add your cheese, add it to your macaroni, and you're good to go. It's a, it's a great all-purpose sauce. In the French kitchen, the saucier, chef saucier, is the most important cook in the kitchen. Uh, that station is. It, it requires the most finesse. It's what they care about most because it's so important. And today, we're going to be using it on my favorite sandwich. And then I'm going to add my flour. And the purpose of this is uh, to thicken the sauce. But what is happening is each of the granules of flour is getting coated individually in the fat. And therefore, uh, it won't clump together or give you a clumpy lumps in your sauce. We want to cook our flour uh, just a little bit. Uh, we're going to make a blonde roux. It's called a blonde roux because we're not going to get any color on it. But basically, you want to cook it a little bit just till it smells like pie crust, like baked pie crust. When your roux is cooked, turn up the heat a little because we're adding cold milk. I'm going to whisk while I do it. Cold milk, hot roux. And you won't have any lumps. And you're whisking continuously. And we're going to whisk until this comes all the way up to heat. OK, now I've got the roux all whisked in. And I'm going to use my flat edge wooden spoon to make sure none of the flour sticks to the bottom. It's important to have a flat edge on your wooden spoon, not a round one. We're going to flavor it with a little nutmeg, not too much. And just keep stirring continuously. This should come up to heat fairly quickly. As it heats up, the individual granules of flour are going to expand and thicken the sauce. We can see we've got a nice, really lovely thickened sauce. Now I could take my cheese and add it now, or right before serving it, whisk in the cheese just to melt it. Don't, don't, don't bring it to a boil. You can break the cheese, break the sauce. Um, just melt it in. You've got a, a lovely uh, Mornay sauce. But because we have cheese on our sandwich, I'm just going to use a plain bechamel sauce for our croque madame. So we're going to put our sandwiches together. Got to butter the outside of the bread so it browns and cooks and adds some richness and flavor to the sandwich. Some Dijon. Now for some ham. You don't need a ton of ham because it's we've got a lot going on in this plate. We've got egg, we've got bread, we've got cheese, we've got ham. So just a couple of layers of ham. Now I'm going to add the cheese. Got some. Gruyere or Emmenthaler will work. There we go. And they're going to go into the pan. Oh, boy, does this look good. So now they're finishing cooking. The cheese is melting. They're nice and golden brown. You're not really going to see the golden brown, but you're going to taste it. You're going to feel it. It's going to be nice and crispy. The sauce is going to go onto the crispy toast, so you want it nice and crispy. Again, this adds flavor and richness and succulence to your finished sandwich. Now we're going to pop these under the broiler. What would I cook for my last meal? 
Well, given the inevitable catastrophe of death that awaits us all, I think that we should have our last meal as many times as possible. My last meal is therefore a dozen oysters with sparkling white wine followed by a big, thick, bloody rare steak frite and a huge Zinfandel. I have it all the time, and if I were to die tomorrow, that's what I'd be having right now. So I've got my eggs ready to go. I'm just gonna add them to the pan, gently and separately. This is a, uh, a pan that Le Creuset actually forges. It's not sprayed with a non-stick surface, so you don't have any danger of the, the non-stick surface chipping off into the food. I love this pan. We've just got a nice light gratin. We just want a little color on it. It helps the flavor. Our beautiful croque madame. It goes straight on the plate, like so. And put a little frise salad. And we've got some nice cornichon, great French pickles. And there you have it, the greatest sandwich on earth. Ham and cheese, bechamel, gratin, fried egg, Simple, great ingredients, a great pot and pan to cook it in. I know I'm going to be making Donna and myself these sandwiches in New York, and I hope you'll be making them too. You are not going to believe what Le Creuset is up to. It's called Pass It On Potluck. It could be coming to you. It's a crazy idea. All they want you to do is they want you to cook from it. They want you to cook a meal with family and friends, Take pictures, share your story. When you've shared your story, they print out a label, you pop it on the box, and off it goes to the next doorstep. I love it. Go to lecrosay.com slash potluck. This could be coming to your doorstep. <laughs>